Well, our big focus tonight. When the Nirbhaya gang rape happened in 2012, one of the big demands by angry, furious people was to make the anti-rape law more effective and to push for the death penalty. In Nirbhaya's case, that is what happened. All the accused except the juvenile got the death penalty and their appeal is with the Supreme Court. Nearly six years later, there has been another uprising against sexual crimes after the rape and murder of an eight-year-old girl in Katwa in Jammu and Kashmir. So last week, the union cabinet passed an ordinance that gives the death penalty to anyone who rapes a child below the age of 12. Today, the Jammu and Kashmir government has followed suit and has also passed its ordinance. But the question is, is this going to solve the problem? That is exactly what the Delhi High Court has asked the government. It wants to know if any scientific assessment or study was done before passing this ordinance. It wants to know whether the offenders will leave the victim alive now that rape and death have the same punishment. The debate over the death penalty has been a long-standing one. There are no easy answers as to what is right and what's wrong. The outrage and the anger that families feel on the rape of their children is genuine. And even more so in India where the justice system is pathetically slow. But will the death penalty really act as a deterrent? That's the big debate tonight. Let's first take a look at some detail, in some detail, as to what the Delhi High Court actually said uh, during the hearing. And it said, as I mentioned earlier, ask the centre, have you conducted any scientific assessment or study before passing this ordinance? Have you been uh, to the root cause of the crime or is it the effect of a public outcry? Would offenders leave victims alive now that death and rape have the same punishment? What does the new ordinance actually say? That is the next question. Well, it has uh, said that there will be a death sentence or life sentence at the very least for those who rape children below the age of 12. There is a life sentence uh, for the gang rape of a girl under the age of 16. Uh, and, and various other things have come into this new ordinance. Uh, the trial of all rape cases, it says, have to be completed in two months, a probe in two months, six months for the disposal of appeals. Uh, and new fast-track courts to be set up, also a national database of sexual offenders. So, is all of this going to work? How will all of this work? Joining us on the program this evening here in the studio with us, we have Anuja Gupta. She's the executive director of the Rahi Foundation, uh, yeah. which works with women survivors of child sexual abuse. Ranjana Kumari, the director for the Center for Social Research, is here with us. Mr. KTS Tulsi, senior advocate of the Supreme Court. Uh, Vrinda Grover, advocate of the Supreme Court, and we have Nirbhaya's parents joining us tonight, Asha Devi and BN Singh, uh, both uh, joining us on the program this evening. I'd like to take this question uh, to Ranjana Kumari first. Uh, it's interesting uh, that the Delhi High Court has actually asked these series of questions. Often, uh, the reaction to a heinous crime like this is justifiably that of anger and outrage. And people want to see action taken. People want to see justice done. Do you think, though, that these questions that the High Court has raised are actually pertinent questions that have to be answered? Well, you know, it's a very, very major decision for any nation to take, and we have taken that decision already because President has already given his assent to that. But and also, we are in, at, at a time in history when the emotional hype is of the order which cannot be believed. You know, this kind of uh, anger, frustration, and people are really, really unhappy about what's happening. Uh, and what happened in Katua, if everybody uh, wants to kind of, you know, reflect on that, a baby's mutilated body after having raped multiple times, killed, banged on the stone, is being used for political mileage. So, you know, so that, that, that was the situation and people in the dock are the people who are part of the NDO, NDA uh, government, you know, the people who really were, um, you know, pinpointed that these are the people who are trying to uh, use this whole uh, situation in this manner. So, I suppose that, you know, the haste with which it was done without any consultation, without any discussion is just to, just a kind of cover up because everybody knew who are responsible people for Katwa and everybody knew the charge sheet was not allowed to be filed. Everybody knew that this is the same lawyers who are trying to and same happened in Unnao that it is the so BGP do you, do you, you so feel I that the ordinance was passed as a political reaction I to think sort it is of a political shift the dialogue away from Le what was happening in these two cases to this look look at the reality over 95,000 cases are pending in the court so this, this is the reality of India 
Nirbhaya's uh, violators are still in jail where capital punishment was already given. The conviction is of and Supreme Court is sitting over it. I do not know why, what kind of a procedure are they quoting and I think Asha ji and Badri Babu are on the program and they should talk about it. They were not initially even allowed to enter the court. There had to be a special permission sought for them to be able to, uh, the mother to go and listen to the hearing. You were not even supposed to know what is going on inside the courtroom. So, you know, this is the kind of situation, legal system we are dealing with. On the one side, the lethargy, the uh, totally insensitive system. On the other side, just one, one yeah. half a minute or, I think the, the, on the other side, when you look at the contradiction in the law, POXO, which is about protection of uh, children uh, uh, against sexual offenses, where it is said that if marriage gets consummated, marriage that is which is 29 percent children are still getting married in India according to National Family Health Survey 4 which is the most recent survey. So, if almost one third I am not saying one third uh, 29 percent is almost one, one third. If one third are getting married and if the marriage gets consummated when the girl is 12 and below then will you hang all those husbands? who are re really married. Well, that's a good point. According, yeah. so, Pox, so, there are so much of conflict Contradic and yeah. contradictions. It, I do not know that is why scientific to... research is huh. needed because we are a very so let, angry. Let, let we want to kill. We want to give uh, just one half yeah, a second. One second. Okay. I just want to, uh, Asha Devi ji, mujhe ye bataye ki, uh, jaysay Ranjana Kumari ne abhi bataya, aap, आपका केस जो है इतने सालों से चल रहा है उसमें तो डेथ पेनल्टी दी गई और अभी भी अपील कोर्ट में पेंडिंग है और यहां ये एक केस है जहां पे क्लियर वर्डिक्ट आ गया और अभी भी अपील सुप्रीम कोर्ट में है लेकिन मैम आज मैं आपसे ये पूछूंगी दिल्ली हाई कोर्ट ने सरकार से ये सवाल पूछा है कि अगर आप डेथ पेनल्टी देंगे रेपिस्ट को तो अब क्या गारंटी है कि वो विक्टिम को जिंदा छोड़ेगा कि नहीं तो आ, आ, मैं समझ सकती हूं कि आपको गुस्सा है और आप चाहते हैं कि न्याय हो लेकिन अगर आप इस सवाल के बारे में सोचें तो यह थोड़ा एक मुश्किल सवाल है इसका जवाब देना मुश्किल है क्योंकि अगर उसको पता है कि डेथ पेनल्टी होगी तो शायद वो विक्टिम को जिंदा नहीं छोड़ेगा जी लेकिन मैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट इतना बड़ा है मैं सॉरी चाहती हूं लेकिन मैं ये ये कहना चाहती हूं कि अगर हम उनको इसलिए छोड़ देते हैं कि नहीं उनको फांसी होगी तो वो बच्चियों को मार देंगे तो मैं ये पूछना चा ये पूछना चाहती हूं चाहे कोर्ट हो चाहे हमारा समाज हो चाहे हमारा कोई भी हो कि इतने सालों से उनको फांसी नहीं हो रही है तो क्या हमारी बच्चियों को छोड़ रहे हैं इसका मतलब कि हम उनके आगे घुटना टेक दें कि भाई आप रेप करके हमारे बच्चियों को छोड़ दो हम तुमको फांसी नहीं देंगे तो ये बिल्कुल हमारे समाज के लिए गलत है हमारे बच्चियों के लिए ये खतरनाक है तो मैं मैं कहना चाहती हूं कि चाहे कोर्ट हो चाहे समाज हो चाहे सरकार हो सबको पता है कि हमारे समाज में क्या हालात हो रखे हैं यहां तक कि हमारी छोटी छोटी बच्चियों के साथ गलत हो रहा है तो मुझे तो नहीं लगता कि नहीं इस पे विचार होना चाहिए कि क्या हम फांसी देंगे तो हम बच्चियों को मारेंगे नहीं हमें तो यह सोचना चाहिए कि हमें ऐसा सख्त कानून बनाना चाहिए सख्त होना पड़ेगा कि वो बच्चियों कानून का डर हो कि कोई बच्चियों को हाथ लगाने से डरे आज अगर निर्भया के मुजरिमों को फांसी हो गई होती तो जिस तरह से मुजरिम जब बच्चियों को कब्जे में लेते हैं कहते हैं कि तुम विरोध करोगी तो हम निर्भया के तरह हालत कर देंगे कई केस मेरे पास है जो बच्चियां कहती है कि वो कहते हैं कि खासकर उसका पति कह देता है कि मैं तू आवाज उठाएगी तो निर्भया की तरह तेरे हाथ निकाल के फेंक दूंगा तो मैं ये कहना चाहती हूं कि अगर उनको फांसी हो गई होती तो आज वो भी मुजरिम कहते कि नहीं हम निर्भया की तरह अगर कुछ करते हैं तो हमें उसी की तरह फांसी मिलेगी तो हमें मैं किसी को ब्लेम नहीं कर रही हूं लेकिन मैं कोर्ट से या हम अपने सरकार से अपने समाज से अपना सिस्टम से हम ये कहना चाहते हैं कि जिस तरह से हमारे देश में हालात है तो हमें उसके विषय में सोचना चाहिए ना कि हमें यह सोचना चाहिए कि अगर हम उनको फांसी नहीं देते हैं 
दे देते हैं तो वो बच्चियों को मार देंगे लेकिन ये भी सोचना चाहिए कि अगर हम फांसी नहीं देंगे तब हालात क्या होगा जी और मैं, मैं आपके एक बार आपके हस्बैंड से पूछना चाहती हूँ परिवार से पूछिए हमसे पूछिए कि हम किस हालात में जीते हैं नहीं एब्सोल्युटली आप ठीक आप ठीक कह रही हैं आशा जी क्योंकि सबसे सबसे बड़ी बात ये है और और मैं आपके हस्बैंड से ये पूछना चाहती हूँ कि सबसे बड़ी बात ये है कि आपके केस में निर्णय हो चुका है और अभी भी इतने सालों से सर आप मुझे बताइए अभी भी इतने साल हो गए सुप्रीम कोर्ट में ये अपील अभी सुप्रीम कोर्ट में बैठ मतलब सुप्रीम कोर्ट एक डिसीजन नहीं ले पा रहा है मेरे कहने का मतलब यह है सर कि हमारे देश में सबसे बड़ी प्रॉब्लम शायद उतनी कानून की नहीं है जितना कि इम्प्लीमेंटेशन की है कि जितनी जल्दी ट्रायल हो पनिशमेंट हो किसी को डर ही नहीं है क्योंकि जस्टिस सिस्टम इतना स्लो है अब आपके केस में देखिए इतना कुछ होने के बाद भी सुप्रीम कोर्ट में अटका हुआ है बिल्कुल सही है अगर हमारा सिस्टम ही सही होता तो हमें रोने की जरूरत थी क्यों पड़ती हमें इकट्ठा होने की जरूरत थी क्यों पड़ती आज इस समय जो हमारे देश के जो हालात है ये दुनिया से छुपा नहीं है दुनिया भी जानती है कि भारत में क्या हो रहा है और दिल्ली में क्या हो रहा है दिल्ली एक ऐसी जगह है जहाँ पर पूरे देश के नेता बैठे हुए हैं और उनके आगे सब क्राइम हो रहा है आप देखिए 16 दिसंबर 2012 में घटना हुआ छः साल हो गया आज तक उनकी फांसी नहीं हुई तो इसका समाज में फर्क तो पड़ेगा ही पड़ेगा दूसरी बात कि अगर हाई कोर्ट कह रहा है कि अगर बच्चियों के साथ बलात्कार होगा उनकी फांसी होगी तो उनको उन बच्चियों को मार दिया जाएगा तो आज कौन सी कठुआ वाली कौन सी बच्ची को छोड़ दिया गया है और जो दो दो तीन तीन साल के बच्चियों के साथ जो हो रहा है उनको कौन सा छोड़ दिया जा रहा है तो आप जब तक इनको फांसी नहीं देंगे तब तक इसको विराम नहीं लगा सकते क्योंकि आप इस समय जिस जहां पे खड़े हैं आप आप देखिए कि जो बलात्कार हो रहे हैं जो कत्ल हो रहे हैं ये किसकी देन है ये निर्भया के बाद जो सजा नहीं हुई है उसकी देन है तो हम तो आज भी बार बार सब लोगों से ही प्रार्थना करते हैं प्रधानमंत्री से भी कहते हैं कि आप सबसे पहले तो उनको फांसी दीजिए कि एक देश में संदेश जाए कि नहीं जो कोई भी निर्भया की तरफ ऐसा काम करेगा कि ना तो उसको इसी तरह से फांसी दी जाएगी आई आप हमारे साथ बने रहिए मैं जो आपने पॉइंट रेज किया है आई वांट टू टेक दैट टू वृंदा ग्रोवर हुल्सो ज्वाइनिंग अस टूनाइट वृंदा यू हर्ड वट द पेरेंट्स आर सेंग हियर एंड यू नो एज द फादर पुट इट इट हैज द रेप एंड मर्डर ऑफ लिटिल चिल्ड्रेन हैज एन स्टॉप्ड इट स्टिल हैपन्स Uh, and and he believes that if by now his daughter's uh, rapists and killers had got the death penalty had got it in time uh, then perhaps a message would have gone out that this would not be tolerated vrinda uh, two things first of all i deeply respect the grief and the anguish uh, that the parents have suffered and however when we are trying to understand that what is uh, an efficacious just remedy for an for what i think is a national crisis and should be addressed as such let us also recall that in the 80s sanjay and geeta chopra were murdered geeta chopra was raped bill and ranga were hanged dhananjay chatterjee was hanged uh, again for uh, rape and murder of a young child a school going child none of those created uh, that kind of fear and deterrence that never would a rape take place in fact in the nirbhaya case the five accused are on death row so if the message has to go out and the signal has to go out that if you will commit rape there will be a severe penalty which can go up to the death sentence that message has already been given by the court however we see that there is absolutely no letting up on the kind of sexual violence that is pervasive so i it is in fact the nirbhaya case proves exactly to the contrary that death penalty is not a deterrent specifically with respect to child sexual offenses let's be very clear that here the dynamics are very different far from deterring the crime or the criminal the death penalty will deter the victim pressurize the victim into silence so we are actually going to be in a very very dangerous and difficult place where there will not even be an avenue to seek redress 
Also, I think it's important to point out here and to keep emphasizing, we have very, very low conviction rates. Yeah. The question of sentence, surely we all understand, follows a conviction. Without a conviction, and there are very real reasons why convictions are not taking place. Why is everybody only mesmerized by death sentence, which will not change anything on the ground? Well, I want to talk about that uh, conviction rate because that's a very important point. And Mr. Katia Tulsi, I'll take that to you. India Spend put out some great data on that this morning about how if you look at uh, the data today, there are rising child rape cases in this country, but the conviction rate is falling. It was... 41% in 2015, uh, uh, it has fallen to 32%. Uh, child rape cases themselves are up from some 19,600 uh, 19, or so to 19,700 or so in, in, uh, in 2016. 90% of child rape cases are pending trial yes. in 2016. Less than 28% of those ended in conviction. There is basically on an average a 20 year backlog in bringing cases to trial. Isn't that the real problem here, Mr. Tulsi, that we need to address more than the death penalty or anything else? Yes, I agree with that. In spite of the fact that I am in favor of death penalty because I believe that it, it does act as a deterrent, death penalty by itself can do nothing. It's not a magic wand. Yeah. And it's very easy to change the law. It's difficult to streamline the system unless the trials are concluded within four to six months. No law can be a deterrent. Even death sentence will not be a deterrent. You see, the governments think that they have changed the law and therefore they have addressed the issue. But that's not how, to, how they can address the issue. They have to have the tools and technology for the courts and the courts must be given some priority. The allocation of funds is so woeful and uh, the, the courts are still functioning at bullock cart speed. We, we need to ensure that somehow or the other, whatever is to be done, it should be done to ensure that people's life and property is safeguarded. This is the first obligation of the state. But I, I am in favor. You see, we can't by statistics say that as to whether it has acted as a deterrent or not because the criminal justice system is moving at a snail's pace. It takes a decade. But how else will you measure it, Mr. Tulsi? Uh, if you don't measure it by the data that you have, how else will you measure it? How do you know it is a deterrent? I, I'll, I'll reverse the question. You see, no, uh, it is a deterrent because, you see, human life is most precious. And human life and no, everybody, we, we do these cases of people on death row. How they pine for another month, another month of, of, of being able to see the sky or the sun. The, the, what, the, what, what the death row prisoners go through is exactly what makes it more deterrent. You see, but, but let me, to Mr. Think Tulsi, that can, let me be the devil's itself. advocate and pose to you the questions the High Court posed. Now, if you had to answer these questions, what would you say? When the High Court asked about this question of, the, you know, the victims now possibly being killed, more likely to be killed actually by the perpetrators because, you know, now that the death penalty is there, why have the victim alive? The bench also asked, have you been to the root cause of the crime or, uh, or its effect of the public or is it the effect of a public outcry? you know, uh, will family members come out and depose against their relatives and family? Now, that's another important point, because in most of these cases, the rapist is actually known to the child. It's, it's, uh, and that's true of uh, Nidhi, rapes uh, uh, across. Delhi, Delhi yeah. police data, most 95 percent. 94 percent, yeah. Yeah. So, Mr. Tulsi, how victim, would you answer those questions? Yeah. You see, the incentive to kill is not only by death sentence. Incentive to kill is to destroy evidence to destroy human evidence and that is that remains a, a, a motivation for murder in, in sexual offenses. People want to 
destroy and evidence. Death penalty is counterproductive. Remove, remove uh, the possibility. Well, the evidence in the case of a rape and victim is the victim herself. It's not herself. only because of the death sentence that it is. It will become. I uh, think uh, yeah. we we are looking at these arguments. Uh, uh, you know, in not in holistic manner, but in in separate. High court is right. The death sentence by itself is not going to achieve anything, and it could also be incentive in some crimes. But the existence of death sentence on the statute for such rapes, heinous crimes against children will, will definitely prove to be a deterrent provided the, the, okay. the courts function within a reasonable time. Okay, well that's the there key. Should be. Uh, uh, Anuja Gupta, I'll just take this to you. What, there what are moment, lots. Sir? Uh, you know, especially this point about fam, you know, the, yeah. the family, relatives, friends. I mean, the fact is more than 90 percent, in more than 90 percent cases, the perpetrator is known to the victim. Yeah. And so in that, it, that just complicates everything further. Yeah. You know, so the whole, what I would like to say is that, you know, this whole debate needs to be located within the reality of child sexual abuse in India. And it is of epidemic proportions. The ordinance is not based on any understanding of the complexity that you're talking about. And as we say that the majority of cases are incest. So the, uh, even the relationship between vic the, the abuser and the victim is so complex. Children do not want to talk if the abuser is uh, a family member. They don't even want to disclose because they are afraid that if they disclose, the family member may get punished. Forget about death row. People are not even, children are not even talking. We've been working on this issue for 21 years. And, and I have spoken to survivors. And they are saying that no, death penalty is not the answer, it will just drive us underground if we come to know that because of the burden of the child knowing that her disclosure is going to lead, lead to, to somebody's this, yeah. death, is going to add to the guilt that she already feels as a result of abuse because that is the dynamic of child sexual abuse, that the, the child takes the guilt, the blame of that and then she must bear the blame of the fact that her disclosure has led to a family member's death. And she may be, you know, an incest happens because there's a pre-existing relationship between the abuser and the victim. So there's emotional attachment if the victim is a family member. The victim or the survivor does not want that family member to even be punished through the criminal justice system most often, right? And in this case, we are saying that you report it, go through the trauma of reporting, okay? And because of you reporting and breaking your silence, your perpetrator is going to be put to death, then children are not going to report. So this is going to go underground, you know, and the trauma of that is going to be lifelong. Already the trauma of incest and child sexual abuse is something that carries on for a very, very long time. So this is just going to add to that, you know, and this is not, uh, this is going to sentence children to a lifelong of trauma, you know, because who's going to handle it? And it's very simple to say that let's, it's a very simplistic solution, it's not even a solution, but it's very simplistic to say, let's have uh, a death penalty. Because who is going to do the systemic long-term work that is required to stop child sexual abuse? And child sexual abuse is not always brutal. It's happening daily, on a daily basis. It's insidious. It's, some, it's not even always rape, okay? And there's a wide range. And in but doing what would this you say when, when you have Nirbhaya's parents here and you can hear their anger and their frustration? Totally, yes. You know, and uh, you know, I don't personally agree with the death penalty either. But even I find it, you know, absurd that in this case there, you know, there was a process and it's taken so long to to even finish this process in right. the Supreme Court of India. Yeah. You can understand there. You can understand yeah, their absolutely. frustration. And look, her father says, if these guys had got what they were sentenced to in time then perhaps a message. Is, is that what the issue is it's here? so true. No, I mean, one is that, you know, we are coming back to how a death penalty, is it a deterrence or not? Okay, or what is the message? You know, when abusers are abusing on an everyday basis and there are people in our families, they are not thinking that far. You know, abuse is a compulsive activity. You have to, as you were saying, tackle what is happening. Why is child sexual abuse so rampant? 
how is it that in India or all over the world, it's family members who are supposed to be protected? You know, you're talking about, you're absolutely right. And what you're talking about is a bigger long term thing we all have to deal with. But Vrinda, there's another thing because what we need to deal in the immediate term, in the medium to long term also is, is just fast tracking justice. Yeah. That seems yes. to be the biggest problem, the whether problem. it's these cases or any case in India. Yes. I mean, for God's sake, you file a defamation suit against anyone in this country, you'll be going to the court for 20 years trying to get that sorted out. But let's look look at some other parts of this ordinance, Vrinda. What do you think of them? This whole idea to create new fast track courts, having time bound probes, a time bound trial. You actually already are supposed to have special uh, uh, courts under the POXO. In reality, that doesn't happen. So is all of this sort of a lovely wish list that we have, which is going to be extremely difficult to implement? It's not even a wish list. I wish it was a wish list. It's actually legal populism at its worst because we are playing with the lives of half the population of this country. It has served one purpose already. The distraction that was needed from what are the reasons behind no convictions and high acquittals has served its purpose. Nobody can actually say the death penalty is a deterrent, but everybody is feeling, okay, well, something is happening. We've got a tougher law. We've got no law because without a conviction, a conversation around sentencing is an absurd situation to be in. Now let us come back to what is this fast tracking happening. There are no special courts. There are no special prosecutors. The investigation, the reason behind the acquittals is the absolutely shoddy and biased investigation. Is there a word in this for the investigation to be improved? No. We will conclude the investigation in two months. Will that raise convictions? No. It already said it should be trials should try to be concluded in three months. There are reasons why they can't conclude and sometimes for good reason. There is reason to record evidence. They shall be concluded in three months. So now we are going to dispense not real justice but speedy trials. What they end in we don't care. Where is the budgetary allocation for increasing the number of courts? Who is putting in special public prosecutors? We have vulnerable witness courts in Delhi for examining child witnesses. Why are such courts not being replicated across the country? There is no seriousness. This ordinance is a gimmick. It's a distraction and we should oppose it and ask the government to really consult with us. And is it not surprising that and child no rights groups, you know, women's place, rights no groups, activists are opposing the ones who work with victims and survivors of sexual violence? Can we uh, allow simply some sundry outrage to be the basis of this kind of change in law? No, I think I, I, Ranjana, I, Ranjana, you don't agree? No, no I don't agree sundry outrage. Really, pe people are seriously angry. People are on the street and it is not really somebody just trying to say things. It is actually... But is you see, a populist no, response? No, it, it, it is a political, no, it is a political response to a situation which really was painting everybody in the ruling party with black color. Their faces were really painted in black and they just wanted to do something quickly to uh, just respond diffuse. to it, diffuse the whole thing. But let me go back to Nirbhaya's uh, father's statement and let me go back to, okay, if, if they were, the rape and murder, even by Verma Commission's recommendation is leading to capital punishment, to death penalty. But they could not do it. How many people have been put to gallows? No, 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 no. Yes. no Justice the Verma Verma Committee said no capital opposite, punishment. Yeah. No, no, wait, wait, wait. No. But uh, death is still in our country. We have a death sentence for killing someone, murder. I just but made that mistake of saying. The point wait, is it hasn't no, stopped murders. Me, let, wait, wait. There's, no, no. But point is how many people in last 10 years have really been put to gallow? So that means it is so much more difficult now to prove the crime to be able to put someone to the uh, for, for the death penalty. It is not easy. Mr. Tulsi is sitting here, ask him how many years it takes and all special courts is all gimmick and I think Brinda said it right. Why it is gimmick? Because you know, have, have you allocated money? Have you allo uh, trained people? Are the sub constables and constables uh, equipped to do the kind of investigation? I'm that actually amazed because months? it also there talks about, of questions it also now. talks about special forensic kits for rape cases in all police stations and hospitals. I mean, shouldn't that already have been there? 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's exposing themselves by Absurd. saying that they will be able to do all but this. Actually, there is a very old it's judgment. It's not there at all. Them. All this system. I wish we were living on moon. We would say, okay, fine. Everything is there. Everything perfect. And judgments are coming by. And we are. Everybody is getting justice in this country. Go to the courts. Ask Mr. Tulsi how many people really have been commuted with death penalty. Ask him. And how easy it is to do that. Little children will be going to the court every every second day, every third day. Every every day to uh, really uh, ensure that the person who in the family who was an uncle who raped uh, the child and then uh, to get him the death penalty. So I think it's just a kind of political gimmick. It's a reaction to so the I, kind I want of to anger. ask the last question yeah. to Asha Devi. Yeah. Asha Ji, I want to ask you this question. Okay, you have cleared that you think that the death penalty should be given quickly, the trial should be done quickly, and the trial should be done quickly, and the trial should be done quickly. But you will believe that इस प्रॉब्लम को अगर हमें लॉन्ग टर्म में देखना है तो फिर समाज में बदलाव लाना पड़ेगा जैसे कि पुलिस खुद कहती है कि 90 परसेंट से भी ज़्यादा जो केसेस हैं वो ल, उस वो बच्चे को जानते हैं लड़कियों को जानते हैं आपके केस में ऐसा नहीं था लेकिन 90 परसेंट से ज़्यादा केस में ऐसा हुआ है तो आप मानते हैं कि लॉन्ग टर्म में हमें समाज में बदलाव लाना पड़ेगा ना कि इस तरह के स्टॉप गैप मेजर से देखिए वो जरूरी है क्योंकि इसका इसके लिए एक जिम्मेवार नहीं है लेकिन मेरा ये फांसी पर सवाल है कि आप सुने होंगे कि जब हमारी केस हुई तो ट्रायल के दौरान भी ये बात आई कि अगर वो विरोध नहीं करती तो हम उसको जान से नहीं मारते दूसरा बार जब उसका इंटरव्यू बाहर आया तभी भी कहा कि अगर फांसी होगी तो बच्चियों को मार दिया जाएगा तो कहीं ना कहीं ये जो सवाल उठ रहे हैं ये उनको सपोर्ट कर रहा है कि अगर फांसी दी जाएगी तो वो मार देंगे लेकिन इसका तो मतलब ये हो गया हमारा ठीक है हमारा सारे सिस्टम काम करने चाहिए लेकिन मेरा सवाल ये है कि अगर हम इसको मान लेते हैं कि नहीं उनको फांसी दी जाएगी तो बच्चियों को मारा जाएगा तो इसका मतलब अगर कोई भी महिला को या बच्ची को कोई छेड़ता है या काबू करता है तो उसको हाथ जोड़ के ये बोलना चाहिए कि नहीं भाई आप हमारे को रेप कर लो और छोड़ दो ये आपने जो कहा यू फील दैट मतलब ये गलत एक गलत मैसेजिंग जाती है आप, आप आपका ये कहना है कि बिल्कुल गलत मैसेज एक मिनट सुनिए बिल्कुल गलत मैसेज जाती है जो हम पीछे नहीं जाते छह साल हो गया आप रिकॉर्ड निकालिए कि कितनी बच्चियों के साथ गलत हुआ उनको गलत तरीके से मारा गया क्या क्या उनके साथ होता है या तो वही समझते हैं या आप डॉक्टर की रिपोर्ट निकालिए वो बताएगा कि बच्ची के साथ क्या हो रहा है आज हम डिस्कशन कर रहे हैं कि फांसी होनी चाहिए नहीं होनी चाहिए होने से क्या होगा ना होने से क्या होगा लेकिन आप उस परिवार से पूछिए उस बच्चियों बच्चियों से पूछिए जिसके साथ ऐसा होता है कि वो उनका किस तरह से वो अपने आप को जिंदा रखते हैं या कैसे चलते हैं उनका एक अगर बच्ची के साथ गलत हो जाता है ना उसका परिवार स्वीकार करता है ना समाज स्वीकार करता है गलत करने वाला आदमी वो खुला घूमता है वो से उसके सर पे ताज चढ़ता है लेकिन बच्ची को कहा जाता है कि इसके साथ तो उस टाइम पे ऐसे गलत हुआ था उसको कौन कौन उससे शादी करेगा तो इन सब चीजों को देख करके चाहे हमारा कोर्ट हो चाहे हमारे सरकार प्रतिनिधि हो इसके विचार में सोचना चाहिए कि अगर आखिर कुछ तो अधिकार है महिला का आशा जी हम लोग न्याय व्यवस्था जो पंगू हो गई है उस पर बातचीत कर रहे हैं मिलेगा तब तो आशा जी के हमें यही लगता आशा जी ये पंगू न्याय व्यवस्था के बारे में बातचीत हो रही है कि यहाँ न्याय है ही नहीं है यहाँ न्याय मिल ही नहीं रहा आप चाहे कितना कड़ा कानून बना दीजिए जो पंगू न्याय व्यवस्था है जो हमारे देश की बिल्कुल देश पर एक तरह का कलंक न्याय व्यवस्था मैं ये भी कहूंगी इसके इससे कोई न्याय औरतों को मिल ही नहीं रहा है बच्चियों को कोई न्याय मिल ही नहीं रहा वरना छह आपको छह साल से कोई आपको याद है हर सोलह दिसंबर को हम लोग याद दिलाते हैं देश को लेकिन क्या न्याय मिल रहा 
रहा है न्याय ही नहीं मिल रहा है दिलाते हैं बिल्कुल दिलाते हैं बिल्कुल वही तो और न्याय मिल रहा है आई थिंक मुझे यही कानून कुछ बना लीजिए न्याय नहीं देंगे तो कानून का क्या करेंगे भी प्रोसेस चलता है वो सारे मुजरिम की तरफ जाता है की उनको रिव्यू करना है उनको ठीक से सुनना है अच्छा ये सारे आपको लगता है सिस्टम इस तरफ जाता है सिस्टम की तरह हो इवन एज वी रिस्पेक्ट द ग्रीफ ऑफ जस्ट अ मिनट जस्ट अ मिनट इवन एज वी रिस्पेक्ट द ग्रीफ ऑफ द फैमिली कैन वी प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड वी कैन नॉट इक्वेट जस्टिस विद हैंगिंग When somebody says मुझे इंसाफ नहीं मिला conviction is इंसाफ They are in jail. They are not roaming on the streets. If we are going to start arguing that the only form of justice acceptable no. is that a person is hanged, I think we are completely skewing the debate and we are not actually taking appropriate measures. We no. must. not allow we, are... we understand the anguish but i heard yesterday at a press conference three parents of child sexual abuse who said they don't agree with death penalty so but even I that has to be understood no, no, okay okay I, quickly yeah. i want i i work with victims uh, uh, survivors of child sexual abuse they do not believe in death penalty they want reformative justice they don't want their uh, they don't even want their abusers to go to jail yes. you know that is the reality in in, in india and you know if I, we totally understand the sentiment and public outrage you know is valid when there are such brutal cases but we cannot make laws i think I, public I, yeah, outrage no, has and, to and be I, contained i also just want to say here that often you know uh, peop, everyone i think has a different sense of what they feel is justice you know for them and it is a complex debate which is why we've been having it for so long and th there are obviously huge pros and cons but i think it is worth now for all of us to investigate to look at how exactly everything that has been listed out in this ordinance is going to work where the money is going to come from where the infrastructure is going to come from how this will actually roll out on the ground i'd like to thank all of you for coming in today it was an important uh, uh, debate to have an important discussion to have